Okay, now we want to expand the analysis and evaluate the pressure drop during laminar flow in a conduit that has a, um, a bump on the wall. So let's see. This is the conduit here. And so we can simulate a bump if we use a circle. And if I build this, then there's the circle. And what I did was to, let's, let me see, this is, this is what you'll get if you just add a circle. But you can specify the sector angle. And so if I just use 180, I only get half of the circle. And if I were to do 90, or let's see, 90, then I get that part of a circle. Okay, so we can specify a part of a circle using um, this approach. And the radius I've written here as uh, bump rad, the bump radius. So this is going to be, I thought this was like a bump in the, in the wall. And so uh, we call it the bump rad. The position of the center is at x equals 0.4. So it's right there. And then uh, what I did was to use this, I, uh, well, let's see, I inserted a Boolean operation that's the difference. And so that's this thing here, and let me enable it. And the way this works is it, I mean, I'm going to disable, or I'm going to undo it and redo it. So if I would have just uh, added this difference Boolean operation, I would have something that looks like this. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add in that geometry. And I'm going to set subtract the circle. And then when I build it, I get the um, rectangle with the circle subtracted from it. Okay, so the way I'm visualizing this is that th we have uh, two plates, and the flow goes through the plates, except now we have a bump on the wall. Uh, that changes the flow. So the flow's got a neck down and presumably the velocity increases and then it goes and expands out uh, and downstream from, the, from the, the bump. And so this bump, it could be uh, caused by a variety of things. Maybe this is some kind of sensor that it is in between these plates. Uh, if we're building something, uh, this also could be perhaps uh, precipitates, something growing. Uh, in the conduit, um, variety of, of possibilities. And so what we want to do is see how the, this bump affects the pressure drop for a particular flow. So the model that we've got here is really the same one that we used for the previous uh, video. And we're specifying the inlet velocity, we're going to use this laminar inflow condition. And on the outlet, we're specifying the pressure. We also have this um, average inflow function that we can, or average averaging function on the inflow boundary that we can use to calculate the average pressure. And our parametric sweep is still set up so we can measure at many different velocities. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so here's the result. This is the velocity distribution. And what we can see is that the velocity distribution is really quite quite different. We've got some very high velocities. Well, actually, I'm sorry. This is not the velocity. This surface here is the, the shear rate. Um, and so we can see we have some high shears right here along the bump. Let's switch it back to velocity. Okay. 
So here's just the velocity magnitude. And you can see what's happened is this bump has constricted the flow and caused these high velocities right here. OK, so we started off trying to see how the, um, how the presence of that bump would affect the average pressure gradient as a function of uh, velocity. Well, here's the results. We can see that it's curving upwards. What we had last time in a straight channel was that the pressure gradient was right linearly proportional to the average velocity. And that was consistent with the hagen Posel equation. But now we can see that over the same range of velocities that the pressure gradient is getting steeper, faster. It's no longer a linear plot. It's a nonlinear plot. And that the pressure gradient is, uh, is greater than what we might expect um, if we would have, say, had these if we were taking measurements here at low velocities and extrapolated them, we would expect something like this. But instead, uh, the pressure gradient is much steeper than we would have otherwise expected. Okay, so that's really what amounts to, that's a fundamental difference. Um, and this kind of thing we'll see occur in turbulent flow, but um, this really, the Reynolds numbers are still probably low enough so that this is not in the turbulent range. But we, we have some um, turbulent-like features uh, happening nevertheless. And I'll, I'll show you the cause of this effect. And we can see it, I think, here in the velocity distribution. What's happening is with the velocity is that the, we have some very high velocities right here and very low velocities right here. And so the the channel is really behaving as if it's a narrow channel uh, right here. And it even stays as if it's behaving, it's behaving like a narrow channel down here. Even though the channel width is expanded, the flow really hasn't expanded until we get down here. And that is causing the extra um, drag or extra pressure loss. And a good way to illustrate that is if we put in some uh, streamlines. And so if we go here to streamline, we can add in the streamlines. And in order to do that, we, we select it and then we have to um, start off the streamlines. And one way to do it is to start the streamlines on a selected boundary. So we'll pick that boundary and I'm going to make the streamlines white because they show up a little bit better. And so there they are. And maybe there are, quote, there are a bit too many of them. So we'll reduce it down to 10. And there's the, there are the streamlines. And if we blow it up, we see streamlines there. And so you can see we have this dead zone downstream from the bump um, that is affecting the flow. And it seems likely that this is a, um, a vortex in here, that we've got some circulation. And so we'd like to take a look at that. So what I'm going to do is set up another set of streamlines. And let's put some streamlines in here. And I'm going to start the streamlines um, along a line that's right here. In order to do that, I need to have a data set. I'm going to put in a cut line that is right along this down here someplace. So I'm going to do that by going to x of 0.4, which, or 0.04, which is the center of the bump. And then I'm going to go, say, uh, 1 1.5, 1 1.5 times bump rad, the radius of the bump downstream. OK, so I'm going to do that for both values of x. And I'm going to have y go from 0 to, say, 0 0.005. So let's take a look at that. So there's the line. And I'm going to start off the points along that line. OK, so that's cut line 2D1. 
If I go here to Streamlines and start off the Streamlines um, Start Point Controlled, um, let me see, a long line cut 2D. Let's put 10 of them. And I'm going to have those, have this one be, let's say, uh, magenta lines. Okay, so there it is. And we can see, yeah, uh, here's what's going on. There's, there's a, a, an eddy here behind this bump. So the flow is going like this and circulating as a result of the shear that's created by uh, the main flow. And this eddy pulls energy out of the flow and so that energy shows up as, a, um, as an increase in the pressure drop or the pressure gradient. Okay, so that explains why the curve is not linear. Let's see what happens as the velocity increases that um, eddy uh, gets bigger, moves downstream. So the size of this eddy is growing with the velocity and also uh, as the velocity gets smaller, there's 0.05, the size of this eddy is getting smaller and we go down to 0.01 and it looks like at 0.01 for these conditions for this size bump um, we have flow that goes over the bump and no eddies forming or at least maybe there's a little teeny one right there that uh, doesn't show up because we don't have uh, points that are um, located there but nevertheless I think you see the point that uh, as the flow gets larger as the velocity gets larger the, uh, the actual geometry of the flow changes because of the formation of this eddy uh, and that is what's responsible for increasing the pressure drop along the length of this flow. So it's interesting because here we have the same velocities that we ran last time. Last time we saw that the pressure drop was a linear function of velocity and it is for a straight pipe but if the pipe has a bump in it and if that bump causes, has an eddy or a vortex behind it um, that can cause that can pull energy out of the flow and that will cause the relationship between the pressure drop and the um, the velocity to be nonlinear so one thing you should try is some experiments with this parametric sweep I've shown you how to sweep over the average velocity, but one thing you could do is pick one of these velocities and try specify or try sweeping over the size of the bump. We could try a smaller bump, for example. Let's uh, go to 0 0.002, and we have the bump rad specified here as a parameter. And because when we set up the geometry, we specify the radius of the bump rad here. Then if we go and build selected, we change that parameter. Let's build all. Change the parameter and now we have a smaller bump right there. And so we can go and repeat this with uh, this smaller bump and we'll get another set of results for the same velocity distribution but for the smaller bump. And let's take a look at our plot here. So you can see now we have a, a, a plot here where it still is it still is curved. It's not it's nonlinear, but the curve is much smaller. And I suspect if we start to look into the flow, that we'll see that these uh, eddies downstream from the flow are much smaller uh, with this smaller bump. And maybe it just takes a higher velocity for them to develop. So 0.01, there's no uh, eddy, and 0.05, well, there's a teeny one there. And 0.025, yeah, there's still a little one at 0.025, uh, but it appears to be a good bit smaller than um, with the larger flow. So here we go up to the maximum flow, yeah, and we see that the, the eddy is um, only going downstream this far, whereas it was it was much further downstream with the um, with the larger bump. Okay, so. For your assignment, 
there are um, a, a couple of what I'd like you to do is be able to go through these steps and set up a model like the one I've shown you but then also go and take the next step and try some other variations as described in the assignment.